in this screencast. I'm going to show you how to access a Teacher's Moodle page, how to bookmark a Teacher's Moodle page, and basically how to use a Teacher's Moodle page, um, which will become very important to you all year. So the first thing you two need to know is how to find the Moodle pages, and they are accessed through any of our main Hopkins web pages, the District one or the North Junior High one, any of them will work. If you scroll down, you will see an Apps um, and Moodle login area. So here is where you log in. Your username is your short name plus the last four digits of your school ID number, your student ID number. And your password this year is your first initial capitalized, your last initial capitalized, and your um, lunch pin. So it's a little bit different this year. First initial, last initial, lunch pin. So once you log in, it will basically take you to a place like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. And you'll notice it tells you about the password change. Here's where you can basically search courses. If you're already enrolled in courses, they will show up over here, but most of you probably aren't. So you'll need to find your teacher's courses and you can literally just search them by last name. So we can go ahead and search a teacher's last name and see what pops up. And we will see that Mr. Ness has a Moodle course right here. So we can click on it and it should take us directly to his Moodle course. The first thing you're gonna wanna do um, is enroll in a teacher's course. If you are a student of that teacher, by enrolling in his or her Moodle course, it allows you to access more things than a guest would have access to. So to enroll, you scroll down, and usually down to the left area, you should see something under administration that says enroll me in this course. So go ahead and click that. And here are enrollment options. You're going to want to self-enroll. So go ahead and click Enroll Me again. And you should then be taken back to the Moodle page, and now you are enrolled in that course. So after you've enrolled, um, I just kind of want to go over the layout. And here's basically Moodle in a nutshell. You have blocks in the middle of a Moodle page, okay? And those blocks are usually kind of in organized by unit. Okay, and if you'll notice right here, Mr. Ness kind of has this beginning unit, seventh grade language arts unit. And then you'll see that down here, he's got a seventh grade frame of mind block, a vocabulary block, a choice novel block, and some other blocks that are sort of hidden right now. Other teachers um, organize by just kind of area of study. So if we look at Mrs. Yesness's Moodle page really quickly, you'll see that hers is slightly different. She has her blocks by topic. So she's got basically, again, a welcoming topic, but then she has a literature block. She has a writing block, okay? She has a vocabulary block, and then sort of a resource block. Either way, you will be able to find tons of information within each block. As well as the blocks, you will notice that a lot of Moodle pages have these side kind of blocks, okay? I would say that probably one of the most important side block is the agenda block. And this is where your English teacher is going to have what's happening on that day. So if you look, this is Mrs. Yasnes' Moodle page, and she's got the first day of school, September 3rd. She has everything that was um, planned for class that day, and then also any homework assignments for that night. So the agenda block changes daily, okay? But the cool part about the agenda block that is that if you notice anything that is blue and is sort of a hot link, meaning that if I scroll over it or hover over it, that little hand appears, that means that those are linked directly to either a PDF or a resource, a, a homework, a movie, you name it. These are basically links. So you don't have to try to find these things inside the other blocks. They're right there linked for you. So if you click on them, you will find a homework piece like tonight's homework, which was all about you. It was a Google form. Or if you click on the Standroids PowerPoint, you could download the PowerPoint that was shown in class that day. 
So this is really a great block to find. Another cool thing this year is you'll notice that um, the North Junior High 7th grade language arts or English classes have their own Twitter. So you can follow us on Twitter. We're going to kind of post things throughout the year, pictures of classwork, kids doing awesome stuff, you name it. Right now, there's sort of some funny pictures of 7th grade English teachers as 7th grade students. So you can try to guess who is who in those. Um, let's see, other cool blocks. Okay, you will find teachers' teaching schedules listed as well as contact information. So you'll know when you can find your teachers when they're available. You'll see grades listed, a grading scale, and a link to Infinite Campus to check your own grades. Um, and then a calendar. And I use my calendar um, in a way for students who are absent to kind of backtrack to see what they miss. So if you click on a date and then you click down to day one, it's a link to whatever day one was. So if you're absent, you can go to the date you were absent and most likely find the agenda for that day. Um, I want to add one more thing about these blocks. Within some of these blocks, and let's just go to this stuff right here, Introduction to 7th Grade Thinking, you will find assignments, okay, activities and assignments, but you will also find a ton of resources. And here's the cool thing, the resources area are basically extra stuff, extra information. And in that resources area, that is where you can really control your learning. You can be determined, you can grow your dendrites, you can go the extra mile to find more information about a subject that was covered. We might not do these resources in class, but they are excellent links. They might be websites that help practice some of the skills we learned in class. They might be extra handouts that have more information. They might be short clips from a movie that better explain something. Either way, whatever they are, the resources put here were, were put here by your teacher, okay? They were found by your teacher, and they are valuable. And if you skip those resources, you are skipping some valuable information. So my suggestion to you this year is before asking a teacher to reteach something or before telling a teacher that you don't quite get something, which is always okay, but before doing that, I want you to check out the resources area first and see if you can maybe try to figure things out on your own. Be sort of a problem solver, okay, which is a big skill, but it's an important skill. Um, okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you now, I kind of went over what a Moodle site looks like. We're going to tell you in class how that if you click on any of these sort of um PDFs that you can save them directly to your iPad using Notability or Evernote, which is great. Okay, this is how we go paperless, but we'll kind of go over that in class with you. What I want to show you now is how to make your teacher's Moodle page a bookmark on your iPad. So the first thing you're going to do is on your iPad, you'll see this little kind of box with the right arrow. Click on it. And you'll notice a key option in the middle that says Add to Home Screen. So you're going to want to click on that Add to Home Screen icon. And what should pop up is something like this. Okay, It will say Add to Home, and then it will allow you to rename that course. Now, you're going to want to do this for all your teachers who have Moodle pages. So for English, you'll probably just want to call it English. But for math or social studies or science or whatever other um, class you might have, call it what it is so you can easily find it. So once you name it, it will show up on your iPad on one of the home screens. It might not be the first one, it might be the last. So you'll have to find it, but the cool thing is once you have a whole bunch of teachers' um, Moodle pages as these kind of icons, you can lump them together into a folder. So if you hold it down and it does that little hover thing, you can group them into a folder that's called classes. So your iPad is a little bit better organized and you can find those Moodle pages really easily. Okay, I think I covered quite a bit. Um, basically, a Moodle page is for you. It's made by us for you. So use them, kind of search, play around, get comfortable with them because you'll be using these Moodle pages probably for the next, gosh, six years until you graduate. So enjoy, I hope you learned something, and I will talk to you later.